and live. Ken, so nothing is off limits except the one thing I said because I don't just the sex it. stuff. Just <laughs> and we're off. <laughs> okay. We're off and running. Oh my god. Ken, this is uh, Ben Boychuk. He's managing uh, editor of American Greatness. Terrific. Nice and to of meet course, you, you know Ben Stein. You're a huge reader of his. I'm a reader, and, reader. And, and, and Ben, you and I met 20 years ago. I'm sorry, say again, sir. I, I said you and I met 20 years ago. I was the bureau chief at Fox News in Los Angeles. Oh, God bless you, sir. And you were, you came and did some uh, some hits on that, and my then 11 year old son was making a video and you chatted with him he's almost 30 now well it's scary it's scary god bless the young man what's he doing now you know he works with me uh we're up in sausalito and we're working to uh to destroy the liberal media really uh, and, and, and on you. that note i'd like to welcome everybody to the world according to ben stein i want to welcome everybody that's listening live on our youtube stream we humbly humbly thank you and that watches the show after. We humbly thank you. And of course, we are joined tonight. Um, I'll first introduce a re our regular because he is managing editor, and we never know with his reception, Big Bear, if we'll lose him or not. Managing editor of American Greatness, Ben Boychuk. Happy to be back. Thanks for having me. Happy, happy to see you here. And of course, for our first time, I'm honored and privileged uh, to have. As I called him a maverick, a bit of a renegade. He, uh, I mean, you, 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 you're a true icon in the Ben Stein, in somewhat of the Ben Stein way. You helped launch what was one of the most beautiful networks and uh, experiences in cable television of all time. Ken Lacourt from who was from Fox News. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. But Ken, where are you now? Just so people know the. I am physically on a houseboat in Sausalito. Um, which is technically a barge. Um, um, I live here with my uh, longtime girlfriend slash fiance, Claudia Cowan, who is a reporter for Fox News, but I can still talk freely. And uh, yeah, enjoy it. Okay. And, uh, and you run a company, uh, what's your site called? Media, so I run, uh, Media Action Network. Um, and we're basically, uh, it's, it's only been going for six months. Uh, I worked at Fox for decades uh came out tried to tried to do fair and balanced news and got slaughtered by the, the the new york times and killed on facebook and all of those things and and really am starting up a a media matters for the right um, um similar to what you might see a uh, a media research center do to really expose and continue to to, to call the, the media onto, onto the onto the carpet for the for them pretending to be fair to help protect the people who are getting slandered and, and, and censored. And, and our long-term goals is to help the rightosphere build up, especially in Silicon Valley, where every single part of the electronic, of the electronic world is working to censor conservatives. And that's from the network level to the CDN level to the uh, Wait, 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 what is the C yeah. sir, sir, what is a CDN level? All of those those things. So a CDN is, is actually a, a middleman between a website and the world. So when you go to a large site like a, like a Fox News, you don't necessarily go to their servers. You go to their servers that are that then went to another company who put a thousand servers around the globe so that it stops uh, denial of service attacks and, and all sorts of things. Every single element of the internet is run by a dork from Silicon Valley who's trying to figure out how to, how to censor a conservative. Wow, from, that's it, uh, frightening. It is, it is. Thanks for that. Thank you, services. Stripe is turning out to be lefty. Um, wow, uh, I'm, very, I'm very upset oh, to hear that. I'm awfully glad that I, <clears throat> that I am so old and I am only hearing it now for the first time. <laughs> and But of course, we have to welcome former shoe salesman, economist, teacher, lawyer, lover, actor, economist, husband, provocateur. Of course, we would not be complete without America's humble servant, Benjamin Jeremy Peanut Eater, Eater Stein. Welcome, Benjamin. And I, uh, I, 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 I wanna- I'm drooling peanuts. I, I love peanuts. Peanuts are an American product. 
I want to give a I there's a I just got a breaking news from every news organization. Joe Biden has officially won four Nobel Peace Prizes. <laughs> and when questioned in the White House, they said, you've done a, such a remarkable job in six hours. <laughs> you are the greatest. And uh, end of the press conference, Ben Stein. My, 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 my. And one of the things I wanted to get in right off the bat is, Ken, you're, you, you, Ben and I, I actually lived in a country where um, we had a discussion the other night about a third party, about sort of the demise of the Republican Party and could there be another party? And I myself lived in a different country where there, when, in Israel when the prime minister was assassinated and it was, it was a terrible time to be in Israel at that point because the, 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 the hatred in the population between the Jews was just was just a terrible because they were trying to go for a peace deal that would never work. So you had half the country. And, and let me just bring up this quick story is one night I was trying to get a I got stuck at the Dead Sea and I was wearing my yarmulke at the time and the bus driver didn't pick me up. And because I was wearing a yarmulke and I had to hail a taxi home. And this is a true story. And I hail a taxi back to Jerusalem. And, it, and he starts talking to me about what he, I think about the whole conflict. And I say, I'm not going to say what I said, but it was very, very, if anybody knows Mayor Kahana, it was very Mayor Kahana-like what I said. And it wasn't very complimentary towards the Arabs. And I said, and then I was driving, I go, what, by the way, what are you? And he goes, oh, I'm an Arab. And I go, oh God, this, uh, and he was a Bedouin and they're very friendly toward, towards, the, to, towards the Israelis. And one of the th reasons I, I br bring this up is because at that time, I never thought that they would be able to, that, that Israel would get back to where it was, where, where it was a unified place. And nobody at the time ever thought that labor, which was the biggest party in Israel, would cease to exist 25 years later, Ben Stein. And that's what I really want to touch on is that we don't know at this moment if there, there can be unity in this country if people just stand up and we can have a new party. I, I think people are always counting out the Republican Party and they always have good reasons for it and it always makes a lot of sense. And the Republican Party always comes back. I have an extremely smart friend in uh, North Carolina named Russ Ferguson. Uh, when, when, when Obama won uh, some time ago, uh, I said, well, I think this is the end of the Republican Party. And he said, we always think that, and it always comes back. And I think it will come back. It'll, be, it'll come back different. Uh, we, I think we've said many times on this show, it's going to come back more like the truck driver's party than the country club party. But uh, it will come back, and uh, it will come back, and it will win elections, at least uh, that's what I think. Uh, I already see so much misconduct within just one day by the present Biden administration, just in one day that uh, I think there's going to be a mountain of that. Now, will the media cover it? Will they even mention it? Questionable, but that's where we conservatives have to do our best to mention it as often as we can. And we do it as often as we can. Little by little, it will build up. Little by little, it will stick. And little by little, the Republican Party will grow and prosper. Ken LaCour, let me ask you that question, because I'm not saying it's necessarily going to be the Republican Party, because if you look at Israel right now, they sort of have two leading class conservative parties. There's no difference between the blue and white and Likud. There's no more Democrat Party, essentially. You know, look, one thing that Republicans and Democrats, the, the leaders of those parties have agreed on is that Republicans and Democrats should lead the country. And, and when you look at on a structural level, historically, over the last at least 80, 100 years, um, um, the structure in America is built now towards a two party system. It's not the way in every country, but it is in this country. And there's a lot of structural impediments to a third party rise, which is why we've never seen one that been in our lifetimes. What, what I, I guess the guy who came closest was Ross Perot, at least in George my Wallace. Life. Pardon me? George Wallace. Maybe George Wallace. Okay, that was a little bit, little before me. So, so I think Trump could actually have a, a possibility of, of starting a Patriot Party and pulling off 20, 30 percent. Um, um, but I just don't think our, I, I think that there's enough impediment into our system to prevent a third party from coming up. We're, we're just not England. We're not. They're, they're just, right. you know, I couldn't agree with more with you. I think it will, the Republican Party will not cease to exist and its name won't change, but it will be a different party and it's been a different party ever since George Wallace showed the way. George Wallace sh showed that the working man was being betrayed by the Democrats 
and needed somebody to represent him. And that somebody was going to be George Wallace. And he was doing fantastically well till he got shot. And, uh, and uh, I think had he not been shot, the whole uh, structure of America would be different. And when he, when he started winning all these primaries against the mainline powerful Democrats, uh, everybody took notice, especially President Nixon said, wow, this is the future. And interestingly enough, the one who really, really, really took notice was Ronald Reagan, who said, wow, this guy is on to something. I'll call myself a Republican, but uh, George Wallace is going to be my mentor. Not George Wallace, the rabid segregationist, but George Wallace, the man of the working class. Did, did the shooting take him physically out of the Usually when you get yes. shot. Yes, he was paralyzed. He was paralyzed. He was, paralyzed. He was very, very close to death. He, he was in the hospital for a long, long time, barely alive. And then uh, little by little, he was rehabilitated, but he, he never really was agile again and never really was capable of being a, a powerful speaker or a rally producer. I mean, he, he used to have these giant rallies reminiscent somewhat of the Trump rallies. And people would come and just scream their heads off because they loved him so much and not part of it was racism, no doubt about that. But uh, a large part of it was, I'm going to stand up and I'm going to fight. He had been a prize fighter in his youth, and he was not afraid to fight. So uh, hold on. Uh, so uh, Ben Boychuk, from what I'm understanding from what Ken's saying, it's not he's not opposed to a third party. He just doesn't see that 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 it happening in our time in in our time or our country. Do you see that? Do you see a third party, a patriot party, sta- coming or? Well, it's possible though. Um... I think a lot depends on, on, first of all, what Trump decides to do, what the Republicans decide to do to Trump, uh, because, you know, uh, Senate Minority Leader uh, uh, Mitch McConnell is making noises that he might be willing to Come vote back. to uh, to remove, which doesn't even make sense. I don't know how we, I don't know how you you retroactively remove a president who isn't in office anymore but that's- that whole thing is so confusing and strange is there some some kind of very uh, un, un, unexplained inexplicable uh, psychological uh, disorder going on there yeah but i i do think that if 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 the republicans decide that they're going to if the rather the leadership of the republican party decides that they are going to come out and and disavow trump then uh, they're they're shooting themselves in both feet because I think in the head if I if I yeah. mention it, in the head I mean look at where you you look at I've been to a lot of Republican functions because I was a Republican White House functionary my father was quite a high ranking Republican functionary and I was at lots and lots of Republican functions I never saw the energy in the Republican mm-hmm. Party rallies that I saw once Trump got into the race that he was. He was uh, just a ball of fire, obviously highly flawed in many, many respects, but he was a ball of fire. There hasn't been a Republican like him for a good long while. And you just answered the question of why they're going to probably, quite a few of them will try to kneecap him and convict him because they want to get rid of him, right? You can't run again if you have been convicted. And um, He's the party if he still can run. Yeah, he, I'm sorry. Say that again, please. Ken. He can still run. He is the party. I, I think so too. He, he, as I said, it's 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 an interesting thing. I live in a neighborhood uh, called Beverly Hills. It's a very very nice neighborhood. I don't deserve to live here. I won't live here much longer probably. And right next to us is an area called West Hollywood, which is largely gay, not entirely gay, but largely gay. They have a the number of gay people in this country is very very small but they have a huge political influence because they're very, very energetic. Trump is only one guy, but he's an incredibly energetic, charismatic guy. He, he can by himself create a party and be the lifeblood of the party. His energy level is just amazing. And his ability to just hone in on what the people are thinking and attach himself to it and have them attach themselves to him is just astonishing. And I want to get to that in, in a second, because he's also being kneecapped, obviously, by mm-hmm. by all the media companies like Ken is trying to fight, you know, so he's been deep platform. They have no plan on their he's he's and, and here's the frightening thought. And I want to get to this after uh, we go to the quick break, because I, I want to bring up Fox News and I want to bring up how easily it is 
for the cable companies to all of a sudden cut the servers of the up and coming news channels like Newsmax and OAN. And if you just tuned in, you are listening to the world according to Ben Stein. I want to thank everybody in the feed that's listening. Um, comment, question, do whatever you'd like. We're, uh, we have a great show tonight. You can find us on iTunes. Um, and apparently, Eric uh, said bye bye to Twitter. If you could t- please tell me that place that pawned us, uh, that is, uh, has us on the Apple store, that would be great. You could catch our podcast there or Apple or Stitcher or Amazon or not Amazon, Google, I'm sorry. All these companies that we hate were forced to be, <laughs> it's sort of, it sort of sucks. I'm like railing against these companies. Uh, but at the same time, so I want to welcome everybody back to the world according to Ben Stein. We're joined tonight by mm-hmm. Ken LaCourt, um, uh, former big, uh, you were huge at Fox News. And I wanted to ask him, so was Ben. And uh, not really. could, I got to tell you, my favorite thing, this is for, for 20 years was watching you on Cavuto. It was my favorite thing. It made the Cavuto, that weekend show, the most entertaining Love show. It. Um, it. it was just an amazing show. But I want to ask you, Ken, because for me, there's one personality that I trust and I like, and I, there could be others for other people. That's um, Gutfeld, a Breitbart prodigy. Hey, really very you know, a Breitbart prodigy. Um, and, uh, but protégé, I can't think of- protégé. Protégé. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you. And uh, but Ken, does it break your heart to see what's come of the organization that you helped build? Let me talk a little bit about uh, about Gutfeld. So Andrew, Andrew Breitbart and I were good friends. We both lived in Los Angeles at the time. And he would always call me and would always pick up the phone and tell you to do something. But it was never for him. It was always for for the larger cause. And he's like, you got to hire Greg Gutfeld. You got to hire Greg Gutfeld. And I'm like, who's Greg Gutfeld? And he'd hired midgets and gotten fired from I don't know, some 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 vanity fair of, of 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 Europe, and I went in and saw that Greg. Remember when Al Zarahari was the was the terrorist de jure? Um, um, he was he was I, he was like he took over for uh, for for Bin Laden when Bin Laden was was hiding, and Greg had had a blog called Al Zarahari's mom's blog, and it was and and he had a picture of himself in a burqa, but you couldn't tell it was him, and he would talk about how he'd come and. And Rosie would put him on the show, put her on the show, and and they'd scream, "Die, Jewish pigs!" I mean, it was just crazy, crazy blog. And I'm like, we have to hire this. So I went to my boss at the time, who was John Moody, the head of news there. And I'm like, what do we do with this guy? And he and they actually came up with the concept of, what the hell? Let's put him on at two o'clock in the morning. We'll call it Red Eye, and and no one's watching then. It's all repeats at, at this point. And let's see if, if that will work. And, and Greg, Greg came on there. So, look, I have mixed feelings about Fox. I, I don't think they are as liberal as most of my conservative friends believe. Um, um, I believe that they've done a lot of things that, that make me rattle my head. But the primetime lineup is more conservative than it's ever been. In it's great. Years. It's absolutely great. I mean, and that's where, the huge, that's where the huge audience is. I mean, back in the day, we had Hannity. And across from Hannity was Combs. We had uh, we had Greta Van Susteren, who I really like as, as, as a person, and I think she's brilliant. I think she's honest. She was no conservative, though. We had we had uh, O'Reilly, who was you know largely conservative, except on things like gun control and 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 uh, and, and healthcare and whatnot. And now there's a strong conservative primetime lineup. The daytime and a lot of the stuff, they just kind of fall into the liberal narrative. Going they got beat by CNN for the first time in ages, their daytime lineup. Last yeah, week. look, let, you know, it's like, and I know, and one hour of their show was beaten by Newsmax and this and that. Don't forget, right after an election, and, and we did this when, when Obama won, when your team gets beaten pretty badly in the Super Bowl, like 400 to one or whatever that is, and you lose a thing, your, your audience goes down. And this happens, it, it, you know, not a whole lot of Republicans are like, gee, I want to turn in, tune in to watch Joe Biden's first press conference. So there's going to be some natural part of this, but I, I won't deny it, they've done some dumb things that shouldn't have brought in the, uh, you know, as, as a debate person, the person who gave the, the questions in a prior debate to Hillary Clinton. Um, um, they, they seem to follow in the liberal narrative a little too much. They just, but this is part of, of look, when I was at Fox and you take a week vacation, uh, I ran the dot com there for, for about a decade. It, it would slowly turn left. It was because it's, it's, 
25 year old kids in the newsroom who are your lower end producers and whatnot. They walk to work, they go on and they look at the New York Times and the Daily News and maybe the New York Post and NBC and CBS. And they say, how do we, what's going on today? And if everybody's saying what's going on is that Trump didn't wear a mask at a rally, they turn those into news segments. And it's, and if you took your hand off the tiller of Fox News at any point, it just would, would, would shift left. I've seen that certainly happen over the, over the last couple of years. And, and again, I, I, I think they're still the best cable, yeah. cable news channel on, on TV. And, and the fact that they're 70% Republican or 75% Republican is a huge boon. And we should all pat Rupert Murdoch on the head. But I, I get the other side, too. And I, I, see I, 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 I myself haven't watched it since the night I called Ben on election night since they announced Arizona. Um, ben, you you still watch it, um, but a lot of people or ha- a lot of the people that listen to us and oh, watch us, Fox is dead to them. I, I have to say, I am such a fan of Tucker Carlson, who has never, if I may say so, given me the time of day. I, uh, you cannot imagine what a fan I am of his, and he, I think, does brilliant work. Uh, the the genius of that guy was courage, his insightfulness, his eloquence by itself dwarfs anything else on television. And uh, I think that they are a major national treasure. His his monologues are so good, they piss me off. Because I'm like, <laughs> I, I can watch most guys out there and I'm like, I could do that. I could do that. And you read, you get his monologues and you see the way that he pulls the language together, that he pulls the right idea together. And it's just like, ah, oh, man, it's like, an actor against Gary Oldman. You're like, I, I can't do that. And, and really good. Uh, really, really good. But Ben Stein, I bring this up to you today because, and I want to go to the Ben Budget, but Ben Stein first, because Parler lost its case in court today. I, one of its first cases about, you know, having a stay of execution almost at, at Amazon. And, um, you know, you're- That's a good phrase. Excellent phrase. And, and, your, and your big thing is, um, and, and, and it's only a matter of time before the media companies- you know, cut the servers on these networks. And we are living in some frightening times. And what's more frightening to me, I got to be honest, is that nobody, no moderates are coming. First of all, no Republicans are screaming from the rooftops, but forget about them. No normal people in civilization right now are screaming. What are you doing? They're not realizing, sir, that this could happen to them. Sir, I am screaming from the rooftop. Uh, may, I, may I scream from the rooftop? For another moment, if I may. Yes. And I am on the second floor of my guest house, so it is close to being a rooftop. Um, last night, I learned by a very close friend that uh, there's now some pretty pretty clear data that uh, Mrs. Harris, the new vice president, is in fact not half African American, but is all Asian American all the time, and uh, all Asian American all the time, exactly, and. Uh, yeah. And I'm so, uh, and I suddenly uh, the scales fell from my eyes, and I realized this is the absolute work of genius. And they pretended she was black, so she would get the black votes. So she's got the votes of people who <clears throat> said, "Yay, <clears throat> our first African American woman on non national ticket." And they just pulled off this whole hoax, if that's what it is. And it's a gigantic super hoax. And uh, I wrote about it right away for the American Spectator. We've gotten some excellent feedback about and it. And you posted it on MeWe, which we are now. I which posted it with my dear friend, Judah, my closest friend ever. And uh, so uh, I'm, so some of us are shouting from the rooftops. And I think we'll just have to keep working on it, working on it, working on it. We add it up, add it up. We cannot give up. We cannot throw our hands up in the air. Just keep working. Just so everybody knows, cumulatively, between the four of us, mm-hmm. By the way, we have we lost close to six hundred thousand followers combined when Parler shut down. Ben Boychuk's American Greatness, Ken Lacourt, you said you lost one hundred fifty. Ben lost over two hundred thousand. We lost a, when 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 Parler get you know. But I want to go to Ben Boychuk too because I brought this to you up the other day. You run one of the one of the best conservative sites on par, of course, with um, American Spectator. But um, you guys are growing. Isn't it, isn't it scary that at any moment your servers could be cut? I, I'm very seriously thinking about going into print. <laughs> you know, be, be, well, because. That's a great really, point, because I said that. that you bring print, up, 
Ben, you bring up a great point because I said that to, I said that to Ken earlier today via text. They're trying to send us back to dial up. That's what they're trying to do to us right now. They, yeah. Like 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 all of a sudden our computers are going to hear, dee, 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 dee. <laughs> you know. And then Ben Stein still still has a oh, but go on, Ben Boychuk. No, I well, I will say um, we do have uh, we do have some contingencies, but. You know, if if you know, as Ken mentioned earlier, if if a if a um, you know the the provider above the provider wants to cut us off, then we're we're kind of we're kind of screwed. And so, yeah, it's it's a, it's a concern. It's a real worry. Uh, but I, I am serious. I I, I think that uh, I, I've been looking at I've been looking at print options, and I've been really <laughs> thinking about you know, how, how we can, how we can get back into that space because I, you know, it, we'll pull it, it up. there's a real, you know, there's a real desire among people sh who should know better uh, to wield the censorship hammer and prosecute people for sedition. And, and, you know, I, I, I got about a quarter of the way through uh, Max Boots Washington Post column from the other day before I had to quit and disgust um, that guy, uh, you know, and that there, you know, these people are baying for blood. Uh, anybody who, uh, you know, is sort of halfway in the in the in the Trumpist orbit needs to be shut up, purged, reeducated. Uh, it's it, it's 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 a little bit. Uh, I, I'm not going to say I'm I'm not losing any sleep, but it is a little bit weird. I, I am a, losing a lot of sleep. I I do not. As I keep saying, I'm an old, pretty old guy. I swim every day at any moment. I could have an infarct and sink to the bottom of my pool. But and, a nice uh, pool in Beverly Hills. You know, but I, and I, got, I live through some unbelievably great days in America. But for my granddaughter, Coco, I worry about her future very, very, very much. Very, I worry very about much. my kids. I worry about my kids. This well, is, this is the a fight, World guy. War One vibe. Yeah. This is right? the fight. I mean, look, yeah. I, I, I saw it coming for, for two years. About a year ago last month, I had three and a half million followers on Facebook and they pulled them down and I have never gotten them to even respond to an email from me. And it turned out that they were fed stuff by the New York Times. It was the, it was the classic two step that we see. Uh, uh, media organization, BuzzFeed, New York Times, there's a handful of them. They will work sometimes with a private organization that does some research. They will go up to Twitter, Facebook, whomever, and, and, and get you zapped because you violated a certain thing that, that maybe you did or maybe you didn't. And, and, it, and it's just nuts. But, but you know, we definitely, this is something that, that we as conservatives, it's our five-year fight at least, maybe a 10-year. We have to build that up from the root level of payment processors and the whole mm -hmm. stack that I said before. Good news is Parler is going to come back. There are financial service companies who are starting to, to, to play this game differently. They're going to, you know, they're, they're, there will be ways to crawl back at this, but it's going to be a fight. And, and it's a fight that we have to take. They're, 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 I, I keep okay. saying this. I, I will keep saying this endlessly. I learned this from a very, very smart fellow named Eric Alter decades ago. And I'll say it again. When the Nazis occupied France in something like four or five weeks, something that no one thought was possible. And they did that in 1940. Many French people said, "Is it? It's hopeless. It's, we're done." And De Gaulle, well, he fled to England, to London, and he said, "My friends, my comrades, my colleagues, we face a protracted struggle, and we face a protracted struggle, and we have all of us have to just work at it indefinitely, and, and we'll never stop having to work at it." And I like um, the story. I just wish we didn't have to be the French in it. <laughs> well, the French, wait a minute. The French wound up winning. But I also, yeah, by the, the way, French, the French watched us win it. But, go ahead. but the French watched the Russians. I also love that Biden's first thing is taking out Winston Churchill's bust, like and putting in. in I'm sorry. Say in, that. Wait a minute. He, say he, that again. He took out the bust that Trump put back in that Obama took out of Winston Churchill, and he put in Shea. Uh, who did he put in? Ben Boychuk. Shea. I can never pronounce his name correctly. Caesar Chavez. <laughs> See, oh, Cesar Chavez, right. He put in yeah. Cesar Chavez's, I, I thought it was going to be Shea. Where, where was this, sir, that this happened? What part of Washington? In the Oval Office. Oh. And um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really frightening times that we live in. But again, it really, um, 
it, it, one of the listeners uh, brings up a very interesting point. Tom Cotton brought it up a little bit today, but if Republicans, you're talking about the five to 10 year fight, Ken, and I want to get to this one after the next segment is if we don't figure out this mail-in voting thing, if we don't figure out this dominion thing, whatever, whether that's real or fake or all the, but the fraudulent mail-in balloting, if these Republicans don't scream for the next two to three years, we're done for, for quite a while. Well, we just have to never say we're done. We can't be done. No, no, no. I mean, ben, if our leaders... Done, we have to right. keep at it. Every, right. it but, like, but Ben, the people that need to keep at it are people like us, but also people that we vote in that could actually implement the change through legislation. Right. And, we have to, And we have to stay on their and, back and keep urging them to do their thing. And you're completely right. And if you just tuned in, you are listening to The World According to Ben Stein. I want to thank everybody um, that's mm -hmm. listening on our YouTube channel. But I also want to thank everybody that follows us on the sites that we hate. Um, sometimes you got to get in bed with the enemy for a little bit until, like Ken brought up, we have our own information super highway. Um, Wait a minute. Don't you have a newsletter? Oh, that's right. Ben Stein at Substack.com. Very you good. See, Thank you, Ben. Which is, which is amazingly, <laughs> you know, and, I and told Ken, you were old. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm getting forgetful. I'm wearing me. We would Ken gave a little bit of that. Uh, I, don't, I can't use that word um, that <laughs> I would. I would. Yes, that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but you know, to grow. and he brings up Substack and he brings up that when uh, Remzo Martinez, who's on, he's on a catcation, um, he brought up the idea to me when he first brought this idea, but Ken about, uh, and Ben about this newsletter to both Ben's, I thought he was joking. I didn't think people had newsletters anymore. I really didn't think that. And, and it's like, and I remember sitting in my apartment on that Sunday as I'm watching and thinking about parlors shutting down going, we're going back to 1996. It's like, what are we? We're like WordPress. And that's where they want to send us back to. And I don't think I, I, I they're going to give it the old college try. Mm -hmm. We're going to keep giving it the old college like try too. We're not going to give up. We're going to give it the old varsity try. We're going to, and we're going to keep trying and keep trying and keep trying. What 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 else do we have to do? I mean, what else do we have to do? It's not like we can quit and then just go back and, and go back to have it be the way we want it to be. We have to just endlessly work out. And what better thing to work out? 100%. Look, the newsletter thing is interesting because it's the only method of communication that I have between me and the people who read my stuff that there's not some Silicon Valley nerd actively doing his best to get rid of me. And, and they can't steal that from me. They can put me into spam folders. My ESP has blocked me twice, uh, uh, MailChimp, because I, I said things they didn't, like, they didn't like me to say, but I can get around that. I can't get around losing my entire Twitter feed or, or Facebook feed, which we will all do. Parlor, I like, uh, be careful right. on MeWe, because he said that the CEO of MeWe is saying the same crap that all these other guys did. I oh, saw that. I saw what he posted. Here. Yeah. My thing tomorrow coming out is don't trust MeWe, because yeah. it's better than Facebook, but. I, I, I saw that today. Yeah. And you're right, the newsletter and, and all this stuff. And, and you're right, Ben Stein, we have to fight back. And these are things we have to do. But, you know, Ken's calling it a five to 10 year plan to get our own servers, to get our own processors, to get all these things. And I was really saddened this week when Sheldon Adelson died, because mm -hmm. um, and and God rest his soul. He was he was great for the cause. But I was always one of my things with him was I wish he would have spent more on that. I wish he would have mm -hmm. spent more on the uh, on the on the on the digital and the uh, fight. sorry, the upstream fight. Yeah, the upstream fight. And I always thought he was fighting. a He was fighting a battle that it was no longer the way to fight that battle. But um, I want to go to you, Ben Stein. You know, it, it's um, it, you have hope in this. But, you know, again, I see this judge today with Parler. In one, I mean, she literally said that there's no, I mean, obviously, Twitter and Amazon were, were you know, were collaborating to bring down Parler. I mean, it's obvious to the eye. And she says, no, it's not. What, 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 I mean, at a certain point, you just want to, you know, how do you not go crazy? Well, you can't go crazy because we have work to do. So <laughs> we, uh, I went to a very wonderful law school, Yale Law School, and we learned the principles of legal realism, which is basically 
the judges can rule any way they want. And they can make up the reasons for it. They can make up all kinds of precedents and legislative uh, items that compel them to reach their decision. They're basically doing whatever they effing feel like. And then they find some reasons for it later. And that's the case with this judge. I'm sure if we track this judge's life and career, we'd find that she was a liberal left winger and uh, had no use for conservative views and conservative thoughts. And uh, there will be lots and lots of those judges. <clears throat> the judges are just human beings. They're, the law is, is an extremely fluid thing. It's very much whatever the judge wants to make it and whatever the people in the media and the powers that be want to make it. Uh, the law is, um, <laughs> Andy, I've said this before too. I'm afraid I've said everything I have to say before, but Andy Warhol said, art is what you can get away with. Mm -hmm. And law is what you can get away with. And the left can get away with almost anything nowadays. But we just need to grasp onto one or two judges and we are on our way. Maybe, maybe we'll be turned back and keep trying. So both you and, so Ben, Ben Boychuk, both you and Kent are working, you know, you have writers that are sending in constant columns and you're, you know, you're working to create a media matters. Ben, what are, what are your, what are your writers saying right now? What are Conrad Black, who writes for both The Spectator, I think, and you writing? What, 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 what is the flow of what's going on? What is the sentiment? Well, are you asking me or Ben Boychuk? Ben Boychuk. Me. Conrad Black, in fact, we have a piece up uh, at, at American Greatness by Conrad Black uh, this afternoon. Uh, you can find it at amgreatness.com. Um, he is uh, cautiously optimistic. He's probably the most optimistic of the people I've got writing for me right now, uh, that, that he thinks that, that Biden uh, won't be as bad as um, a lot of people fear. Now, I'm in a lot of private chats uh, with, with people who, who, uh, who work for us or, or old friends who used to work in the administration. And, you know, they're talking about, well, let's see, if I have to flee the country, uh, where should I go? And so I, I think there is a, a range of opinion. Um, I'm, I'm probably more guardedly optimistic. I'm a little bit more uh, Ben Steinian, I think. Uh, You're I, rubbing I, off, Ben. Yeah, I don't think... Um, I don't think anything is hopeless. Uh, one of the lessons that I learned very, very, very early on is that there are no permanent victories in politics. There are no None. permanent what in politics? There victories. are no permanent victories in politics. I mean, you know, there, there, people thought that the New Deal would be forever, I think. And it lasted for a generation. So we, we, we could be in for a generational. We're really still in it. Really, they never, yeah. they never really went away. No, yes, we've got vestiges of it, but things don't. But think, you know, you, there's an ebb and a flow on a lot of this stuff, and so, but you know, the 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 flow right now seems to be toward, you know, Woodrow Wilson and A. Mitchell Palmer and and uh, prosecuting people for sedition. So, I, I, you know, so we'll see how that goes. That does worry me a little bit. Uh, but I, I, I it should, it should worry you. It should worry you tremendously. The uh, sedition acts and the sedition enforcement were largely invalidated by the Supreme Court. Yeah. Um, I hope we have a Supreme Court that's got the guts to do that nowadays. And I, but uh, the, the fact that the, the Democrats would even consider invoking something as repressive as sedition laws is, is just absolutely breathtaking. But. That's the way it is. We have to deal with it as it is. So we have you know, to deal with it as it is. I mean, it, it's it's a very unfortunate set of circumstances, but we have to deal with it as and keep on trucking. Keep you know, Ben, I, I was thinking about that because you made a similar point, I think, last week, uh, and you know about the sedition laws in the court and, and the Espionage Act during during the First World War, and and yeah, the Supreme Court ended up coming in and doing the right thing. Uh, but not after people who had no business being in prison were were rotting in prison for years. You bet. Three, you're, you're, so, years. you're terribly right. You're totally right. No, ter there was terrible suffering. <clears throat> There's terrible suffering going on right now. I mean, there are an awful lot of people in this country <clears throat> who are punished and suffered, and their families were wrecked and were wrecked financially, and are going to be on um, uh, 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 skid row in one form or another, be purely because of political vendettas and vengefulness by the left and uh, it's of course it's it's outrageous it's just horrible now and let me Dr. just Fauci. let me just make one last little point mm -hmm. about that 
Um, despite all of the, the members of Congress who have been going on the floor and on television and talking about insurrection and, and sedition and so on and, tr and treason, and despite all of the, the uh, newspaper pundits who have been doing the same, most of the nobody's been charged yet with sedition. No one has been charged yet with insurrection. And most of the charges that have come out of the, uh, the June 6th incident at the Capitol have had to do with uh, trespassing or uh, interfering with uh, uh, legislative business, not, not you know, the heavy duty stuff that, that people keep trumpeting. So we'll see, I, you know, but I, do, but, I, but I do think, yeah, I agree. It's a, it's a big concern um, that, uh, you know, those are big guns in terms of the law. You can go to prison for a very, very long time. And that's the kind of thing that, that uh, a heavy handed state uses to quash dissent. Can a I very, ask very you a scary thing where Prime Andrew says he's calling for unity to have his law enforcement people punish anyone who deviates at all from a strict uh, left wing line. That that's uh, extremely unfortunate, and uh, we will. But we will keep on working. We'll we'll keep on working. But I have to say, I put out a call to lawyers all over the country to please join in with us. We need we need the courts. We need to work with the courts. By the way, anybody that says they want <coughs> unity is the same person that says they're not opinion. They don't. They're, they're open minded and they don't judge. Um, Ken, what kind of uphill battle are you facing? Because you, obviously, I know you've been shut down. You've been locked out. What is what, what is the trajectory looking like now as far as getting a quarter of your business back? You know, I'm not even trying at this point. Uh, um, it's like I, I, you know, some of these. You know, you talked about it's like, you know, we, we have to work with all these companies we hate. It's like you're living in your ex-wife's guest house. I mean, it, it is it is it's a tricky thing. Um, look, I, I think that now is the building time and now is the fighting time. And and and, you know, Ben, what you were talking about earlier about how the cyclical nature. I mean, you know, when you've been around long enough, as most of us have, we see the pendulum nature of politics go back and forth. And we've seen it, you know, it, just in California on so many issues. Oh, we were you know, the, the crime of the 70s and 80s, and then here comes three strikes, and then the rebellion against three strikes, and you see this go back and forth. Certainly the big thing that scares me with that whole, the, the thing that can break that pendulum is when you can squash one side of the political debate. That's when societies go off the rails, is when you say, yeah, it's not just that you're wrong, it's that you're wrong and shut up, and we have ways to shut you up, and whether that's prison or whether that's, that's the... That's the, well, you can't call it uh, anti-First Amendment because it's a private company. And, 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 you know, and I understand the nuances of those arguments, but the political, the political town square is, is now being, being wrestled away from one side. And, and we've seen that you know, ever since they were screaming at Ann Coulter and the others and lighten, lighten Berkeley on fire to prevent conservatives from, from speaking there, we've now seen that come into the mainstream and become unfortunately, a primary tool used by Democrats to shut people up and to win debates. That can break the system. And I think that that's our most important thing that we need to bust out no matter what. Good well, we got, well, yeah, and then, then I, and now I repeat my call for lawyers. Uh, we need you lawyers to get there in court and use your energy and your usefulness and your knowledge of the law to uh, fight back. I mean, we, we've got to get a decision from some court that uh, the essentially, uh, when you have media companies as powerful as the big uh, mainstream media uh, tech companies, they are essentially part of the government. They, they, they will figure out, a good judge can figure out a way to link up those companies with the government and say it's government interfering with free speech. We, that's what we need. Or, or a change in copyright laws that stops them from being able to keep those monopolies together. I mean, well, you know, they, we tried that. We tried that. We tried that. Well, no, we kind of, we kind of didn't. I mean, I mean, everybody's talking about two thirty and whatnot, and I'm, I'm very 50 50 on that. But Facebook, when you post on Facebook, they, they don't get your exactly the exact equivalent of, of a copyright for that, but they get worldwide first rights to use your 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 content, whether it's the pictures of your grandkids or the things that you write on all of their sites worldwide, and you basically can't take that away from them. But if I want to come up and start Ben's, Ben'sBook.com, they will use the power of the federal government to protect those copyright claims so that the copyrights, so that the content that people put onto Facebook, I can't make another site and grab that content and say, 
because that's why we stick to Facebook. We don't stick to Facebook because it's got a great messenger program. We stick to it because my niece's pictures are there and, and my sister's pictures from her, from her birthday are there. And, and, it, and it's, if, if you, it is a complete a twisting around of what the copyright law in America was, was, was meant for and what it exists for that is allowing these people to say, we have no responsibility for this content. You can't sue us for this content, but you can't use it if you want to start a competitor. That's a that's an area of law that hasn't been explored yet. In, in well, we need to explore it, discover it, and plant the flag of free speech on it. And say, I mean, look, if the if the judges of, of the United States, of the Supreme Court could find a legal basis for saying abortion was a right, uh, they can find a legal basis for anything. It was only a right after a certain amount of months, though. Haven't you read the fourth? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so can, the judges can do anything they want, and we we have to work on uh, educating them, informing them that that's uh, following the law. If you just tuned in, by the way, you are listening to the world according mm-hmm. to Ben Stein, Ben Boychick. Since I so mangled the last one, if you would please, <laughs> I haven't done back this in and, forever. Yes. Uh, well, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching the YouTube stream. If you have not subscribed yet, hit that bell subscribe so you get alerts uh, when the show goes live. Um, uh, like us on Facebook, if you wouldn't mind, at The World According to Ben Stein. Uh, we are patiently awaiting uh, the, emerg- the re-emergement, uh, re-emergence of Parler. But in the meantime, sign up for the newsletter, benstein.substack.com. You'll be glad you did. You will be glad you did. Thank you so much for that, Ben Boychuk, managing editor of AM Greatness. You know how to clean everything up so well. <laughs> and... Um, and uh, but I want to welcome everybody back. And, and I got to say, I'm like many of the people that listen to the show. I haven't watched the news. I got to be honest, since election night, since that fateful night, Ben, that I called you up and I said at two in the morning to you, the fix is in. It's done. You had just come from a party. And I got to tell you, um, I had stopped watching Fox during a, at a certain point myself. Mm-hmm. I started turning into um yeah, it was uh, such a bad night. But but I started watching. Um, oh God, what's the the, the free station that that the, yeah, the, the number one the C-SPAN one. No, I started watching C-SPAN oh. to watch certain things because I was sick and tired of getting interruptions. <laughs> you know, like I I, I couldn't believe I I I had gone to C-SPAN by by the suggestion of Larry Clayman. But I want to know what it's really important for us to share this because we have to live. You're in your houseboat, Ken. Ben's in Big Bear, Ben's in the other room. And we all do stuff for entertainment, for fun, because we have to live, okay? We have to live at the same time as we're fighting. And I, I, I want people to get some good suggestions from you guys. You know, I personally, I love listening to music to the people out there. I suggest if you're ever in a down mood, listen to The Killers, as everybody you know I love, but also listen to The Gin Blossoms. Allison Road will always put you in a good mood. And, um, but I'm just sharing my experiences now, Ken, of like things that you need to do. You need to get out there. You need to enjoy life, even though we're not really allowed to get out there and enjoy life. You're on a boat. You could go anywhere. Well, I enjoy my, I have to say, I'm incredibly lucky because I get to, uh, I live in a very nice neighborhood. I don't deserve it. As I keep saying, I won't be able to afford it much longer, but I get to have uh, 12 step meetings at my house because I have quite a large house. I uh, get to uh, have my beautiful wifey there with the saints of saints, the goddess of goddesses. I get to have my dear friend Judah coming up and visiting me. I get to have incredibly, unbelievably good uh, salmon. Uh, I enjoy myself very, very much. I'm terrified about the future. I am literally terrified about the future, but I try very, very hard to concentrate on living one day at a time. Other as I will really blow my brains out and, uh, I concentrate on living one day at a time. And I think that's the smartest thing to do and enjoy yourself moment by moment by, by within the limits of your ability, buying things. Milton Friedman, the greatest economist in the history of America said, one of the best uses of money is to buy things that you enjoy. And uh, for me, that's uh, discs of uh, just uh, old time rock and roll. So there you are. And, and, uh, that's just simple. I apologize for taking so much time. No, I, I, Ben, it's your world. And okay. and one of the most fun things we do is we drive out to the desert. We listen to music. We have great conversations. And most of them aren't always about politics. If people are curious, they're about love, life, um, love, life, but love. And um, But Ken, what about you? 
Oh, I drank. <laughs> That's I buy very those funny. Big, those That's big very, very funny. From Costco and that, that works. And then uh, these days I've been going on Zillow and, and Ben was the first one to turn me on. And I look at homes in Sandpoint, Idaho. Oh, <laughs> no. It would be better if I lived in Sandpoint. It's a wasteland. I, Don't I, do it. This Nobody is great. Goes to Sandpoint. This is great. I cannot recommend that place highly enough. No. Although it's very cold there in the winter. But, uh, uh, I love that place a very, very lot. And um, you wrote a story I, I, probably 25 years ago saying they when when Sandpoint was considered a hot spot for Nazis and whatnot because there was four of them, and and you wrote a, a a column that you said they don't hate me in Sandpoint, Idaho. Right. And I oh, I, I, I just Second. love Sandpoint, Idaho. I know I, I, it, it's it's really really wonderful. And uh, don't go there if you're a troublemaker. Don't go there if you want to complain and whine and moan and bitch. Go there if you want to enjoy it. Ken, that's really funny that you bring that up because both you and Ben are going on Zillow, look <laughs> Ben Boychik, looking at places in Sandpoint, Idaho. Blast it. You're, I don't want people to Yeah, I know. Out. It's more expensive, but it's still half as much as where we live now. So uh, yeah, that's, you know, for, that's for sure. It's less, no, but less I, the than reason half I, as much. I, I bring this up because Dr. Death, uh, you know, Dr. Doom, Dr. Death is Michael Bodden, as Greg used to call him. But Dr. Doom came out today and said that the new that the vaccine, which Ben got a couple hours ago, a few hours ago, thanks to the President Trump. Um, you in bet. Record, thanks to President Trump. In, re in record time. But but he's basically said he came out and said the guy that had was wrong about AIDS for 36 years, every single prediction he made. If he were in the open market, he would have been fired 62 times. Yeah. But he works in the government. You just get, you know, a better job. But he came out and said that, that the, 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 the vaccine is, is, is not good. There are certain strands. So he's even giving us an even more doomy thing right now. So if you're an American sitting at home, I didn't watch this. I just read about this, Ken. It, what do you do at this point? Well, I mean, you, what, how do we live? You know, we listen to XM radio. We put our heads down on my pillow and sleep. <laughs> and we, and we, when we get up, we drink some yummy carbonated diet soda and we eat yummy uh, schooner base or schooner fjord salmon and we eat apple pie and we're happy. Ah, my pillow. Can I have a commercial for that right now? So you see that a number of a number of stores are are pulling. Yeah, we were talking about that the other night. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to start up, and 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 we've already got a gang out here doing it. Starting next week, we're going to get people to have a a basket boycott of Bed Bath and Beyond, and we're asking people to fill up their to go to Bed Bath and Beyond, to fill up their carts full and complete, and go up to the front and ask if they can get themselves a my pillow, and if they can't to abandon their cart in the store and, and move on from that. So, you know, we'll, we'll yeah, put that, I love that. I'm, I'm, I'm game, I'll, I'll go to Bed Bath & Beyond next week. What day is that? Uh, we're, we're gonna start it, we've got a group starting it off in Marin on, on Tuesday, and then we'll hopefully roll this, roll this out nationwide. If we were Democrats, we'd throw, we'd throw rocks through their windows. But no, we're, no, we're no, we don't do anything violent ever, ever, Are ever, we? ever. Van Boychuk, thank you, it's your turn. Well, um, are, we, are we still on the, you know, how do you live through this? This Yeah, I think it's very important for people because I've people, got, I, I think I think right now people are living in gloom and doom right now. And I think people need to realize that life is still in, you know, life is still in session. Well, I've got two lifetimes worth of books in this place. But apart from that, I think it's very important for people to remember. And this is actually a lot easier said than done. It is so important, especially now, to cultivate and maintain friendships. Mm -hmm. I mean, absolutely. Very good. Very good. I play spades mm -hmm. every Monday night. And are you allowed to use that word now? I guess. I Damn know. spade. I, I play, anyway, I play cards every Monday night, if you want to be more generic about mm -hmm. it. I play cards every Monday night with, with, with the same group of people. And we're quite close friends, and that's and that's uh, important. That's what keeps me sane. That's really the highlight of my week. And I think that that whether whether it's uh, whether it's playing cards with people, whether it's joining a, you know, I mean, uh, there aren't 
I mean, there are still philanthropic organizations, uh, even in COVID times. I mean, there are things that you can do, but it is very difficult to do because we all have busy lives. We all have jobs. We all have families. And the, the danger is when you get kind of sucked into your, your own little world, you kind of lose sight of, of things that are going on outside around you. One of the best things that ever happened to me was four years ago this week, there was a there was a huge snowstorm up here where I lived, and I had four feet of snow and ice in my driveway, and uh, the snowblower didn't work, and there was nobody there with the with they got guys with bobcats around here who can dig you out, and no and they were just completely overwhelmed, and so I was kind of stuck for about a week, a little over a week, and for a while with no power, so I just started walking the neighborhood, and I started meeting my neighbors and talking to my neighbors. And, and learning about who they were and who they are and how long they lived here and things like that. I think we, you know, it, it seems hopeless politically, but it isn't hopeless politically. But, but the antidote to it is, is to cultivate those, those circles, those friendships. Uh, it's hard, but it's worth it. Have you found that, that Zoom actually makes it easier? I mean, I've reconnected with my friends who live on the other side of the world and on the other side of the country. And, and because a lot of them aren't busy, I know, eh, let's do a Zoom glass of wine tomorrow night. I, I've been doing that. And I, I got to tell you, I love it. I enjoy this conversation as yeah. much as if we were at a bar or, or, or at, at a restaurant. This, this I'm going to do it every night. I'm not kidding. By the way, I'm just so kidding. you know, Ken, that's the biggest compliment anybody ever paid to us. Yeah. They said it reminds them of a Hollywood speakeasy. Mm -hmm. And, and um, even though I don't, I don't consume it anymore. I do miss the speakeasies and I know Ben does too, in a sense, miss the speakeasies, but you're right. It, it, it I think what you guys just brought up is, is, is so interesting. Um, and I'll share this. My therapist actually talked to me about this today is get it, new, getting nutrition from friendships mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and, and, and honing and learning from friendships. And it's, this has forced me, COVID to do things that I'm really uncomfortable with doing. Mm -hmm. I was never a FaceTime person. Mm -hmm. I, I, I really wasn't. And, 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 and I was never this, I was, just, it just wasn't my shtick. And I'm learning that it's like, it, it's sort of interesting. It's sort of cool. I mean, I've, I've met Ben Boychuk twice or three times in my life you know, and I'm getting to meet you and you get this like thing. So I, I think that's a great, those are great words of uh, advice to people and suggestions. I um, would like to say, I'm going to cast my vote now. We should do this show more often and we should have food uh, while we're talking and uh, why not do it all the time? I don't think it costs much. And uh, uh, there you are. And by the way, I think another great thing we can do during this period is to be thankful to be Americans. It's still, with all, with all the problems we have, and there are plenty of them, it's still unbelievably great to wake up and be in America. <clears throat> I'm a Jew. We Jews have been, never been treated so well in the whole history of Judaism as we are in the United States of America. We are thankful. We're on our knees. My wife's a Presbyterian. <clears throat> she and I are on our knees with thanks to God every day for being Americans. We, uh, that's a good way to spend your day, being on your knees with thanks for being an American. I, that's a great, great thing. And Mr. Biden, Mrs. Uh, uh, whatever your name is, uh, you cannot take that away from us. We are going to keep on loving America. You can say all the bad things you want about it. You can say how racist it is. It's great. It's the greatest thing since sliced bread. It is great, great, great. Spend your day in gratitude. It'll be a good day. I agree. Ken, tell people how to find Ben. That was beautiful, by the way. Thank tell you. people how to find you. So next week. Very best thing is go to mediaactionnetwork.com. We have a daily newsletter. Sign up to that. And, and look, what we do is every day we talk a little bit about the media and we give you one thing that you can do to kind of kind of punch back, whether it's buying a shop, a, a basket full of stuff, whether it's sending a note off to some girl who got fired from her college newspaper because she said that the systemic racism doesn't exist in police forces and telling her she's not a racist. Sometimes we just buy guys a steak dinner after they've been screwed over by the media, but it's, it's a way that you can be a digital warrior and fight back. That's, that's exceptional. Ben Boychuk. That well, steak, that steak dinner could be bought in big bear at what place? It's actually blue Jay. It's stone Creek Bistro, uh, stone Creek Bistro.com right near Lake Arrowhead. Uh, I would encourage everybody to go to, of course, American Greatness. Check out what we do seven days a week. 
at uh, www.amgreatness.com. I would say follow me on Parler, but you can't. And I'm not on Twitter anymore. So, so much for that. But go to American Greatness. <laughs> go to the American <laughs> Spectator. And American I would say, I, ben, I was about great. to say, go to the American Spectator, too of equal or greater import, both amazing, amazing, amazing publications and read Ben's uplifting pieces about hope and faith and race and uh, everything in the middle. But uh, I just want to say to everybody out there, don't, you know, it's turn off your TV sometimes and live life. I know we're told not to live life, but figure out a way to live life. Like Ken said, get a Zoom call with somebody you haven't spoken to. I just want to give a shout out to my mom and uh, who, who had a bit of an issue this week uh, physically and uh, for all the people I reached out to and was able to speak to. And Ben immediately said, I'll pray for her right now. And um, it was it, it's so important that we have friends in our lives that when we're going through these times, and I was on the phone with Ben Boychuk about this today, that we have these people and we nourish these sort of relationships. And I'm so grateful for, for Rock Breath. And I'm so grateful for said bye bye to Twitter. Um, I'm so grateful for all the people that listen to us. You know, um, it really, it, it, it's touching and it means a lot. We are adding a third show very soon. Um, and I want to thank again, Ken LaCourt for joining us tonight. You are a, just, a, you're great. And I, 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 I thank you for fighting the fight for a long time. Ben Boychuk, managing, managing editor of AIM Greatness. Please go uh, visit his site as much as you visit American Spectator. Thank and you. of course, the show wouldn't be complete without America's humble servant, Benjamin Jeremy Stein. We salute you, sir. And if you could lead us out tonight with a little short hymn. A little short hymn? Yeah, you love singing. It's, the, show, the show ain't the show if you don't. I have to do the one I always do, if I may. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountains, majesties above the fruited plain. America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Good night, we'll see you soon. Avenge me, Wolverines, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>